Let's open this thing up and see what we got inside. All right, we got ourselves a cap and a ligature. Okay, let's take a quick look at this ligature. I actually really like this engraving that's on here. It's got London here, and I really like these screws, but unfortunately, the ligature just didn't fit when I put a reed on and I was unable to even really get a sound out of the mouthpiece having the reed stay on it so okay I'll probably take these screws out and just use them for something else all right there you go okay ladies and gentlemen so because I wasn't able to use this ligature at all I had to wait another week and order a different ligature that's what I have in this box here so let's open this thing up and see what we got Okay, so this is the ligature that I ordered from BG, and you can see it says Tenor, Dukov, and Berg Larsen. These are those thin metal Tenor mouthpieces. Okay, so with this ligature, you get this cap. And obviously you get the ligature this seems to fit very well but I'm not really here to do a review of this ligature I'm here to do a review of this mouthpiece so let's take a look at this mouthpiece here this is a stainless steel mouthpiece I have not had a chance to play through this yet but I did put my mouthpiece protector on here like this and you can see because this is a thin metal mouthpiece there's a little bit of a hangover i might have to cut that but i'm going to play it first just to see how that feels but if i'm looking at these rails they are relatively thin they look very even this mouthpiece looks like it is cut very well as you can see we got a bit of a forehead right there let's take a look at this rounded chin area and inside the chamber we have this parabolic shape here parabola <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the inner part of the chin area or window as people like to call it. Okay, so I'm still in the process of writing a book, ladies and gentlemen, and I like to stick to face terms like calling this a chin right here, calling this tip a forehead like this because that just translates much easier into other languages. But let's take a look at the inner part of this uh, chin area here. You can see how that's a little thick on the edge and goes down to a thinner part here it doesn't seem to be wedgy like uh, the Duke off that I have Let's take a look at the inside of this chamber here we can see this inner triangle here and that's flat it's also a pretty large angle implying that this is not a very aggressively baffled mouthpiece let's take a look at it from this angle kinda looks like a little cave there All right, so this is a relatively light weight mouthpiece for a metal mouthpiece. And initially, it feels a little cheap, for lack of a better word. But uh, ultimately, we'll have to see how it plays. At least compared to some of my other metal mouthpieces that have a good bit of weight to it. I have a steel ebonite hard rubber Ishimori mouthpiece that has this similar type of parabolic cutout in the chamber so I'm curious to see if there's going to be a similar type of sound characteristic between this mouthpiece and the Ishimori. We have this 100 over 0 SMS so with Berg Larsen the 100 is the tip opening I've been told that they feel lower than what the number uh, implies that it is this zero implies that it is the smallest chamber I think it's zero one two and three and the SMS has to do with the facing curve now as you can see here you can see the angle by which this curves this is what the SMS implies like a short facing curve here and I think it's the M I have to double check that has the uh, more standard 
what they call an American type of curve. This is what they call a French curve, the SMS here. So uh, on that pamphlet that you get, you get a lot of really good information. Let's strap a read on this thing and let's see what we got. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so as you can see, I got the Berg Larson here with the BG ligature. So let's play. <laughs> to play. is really how easy it is to play this mouthpiece okay Definitely, if I had to do this over again, get a 105 instead of a 100 because it definitely does feel a little smaller than what I would normally feel comfortable with. However, probably even a 110. So I like to shoot low and then work from there. But with this one, I would definitely go up like an entire number. But they're using the uh, Imperial system. So this is a 100. I'd probably get a 110. Uh, let me do a recap and I'll tell you guys what I think about this. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, there are three big takeaways that I have for this mouthpiece. And number one, I am really, really amazed by how easy 
how physically easy it is to play this mouthpiece. I was really surprised by that, especially since it's a zero chamber. This is the smallest chamber that they have. It's a small chamber mouthpiece, and usually you get a certain kind of resistance with that. And I didn't really feel that with this mouthpiece. Made it really easy to play. Also, I don't feel like it's easy to play because of the tip opening being only 100. I feel like that just by design, this mouthpiece is very easy to play. Uh, the second thing is definitely the ligature. Just make sure that you get another ligature uh, when you decide, if you want to decide to order one of these mouthpieces. And the third thing is that it definitely feels like the mouthpiece is smaller than what the tip opening implies it is. So uh, I'm a huge fan of Lenny Pickett. Ever since I found out who this guy was playing saxophone on Saturday Night Live, I was like, man, I, I got to find out what's going on with that dude. So apparently he plays a Berg Larson. Uh, I, from what research I've done on the Internet, hopefully it's valid, but he's playing a 130 over zero. I am not sure about the facing curve, whether it's an SMS or an M, but... Uh, it makes sense now that he would be playing a 130 because that's probably going to feel closer to what we would associate a, a 120. So, all right, I definitely have a good impression from this mouthpiece. I'm very curious to see how this stainless steel is going to hold up over time. Hopefully that will preserve the integrity of the sound and of the quality of the mouthpiece itself. I'm very happy with it. I'll probably wind up selling some of my other mouthpieces and maybe selling this one and then getting maybe a 110 or something like that and if i decide that i do want to play it more often i'll probably just open up my ligature options i'm okay with the bg ligature but i'm starting to find more of these slim metal tenor sax mouthpieces so i definitely want to make sure that i have the ligature variation that i do with my other mouthpieces all right ladies and gentlemen so that's that stay tuned i also have this barry sax video coming up for doublers out there i finally was able to get a ligature for this thing so i just want to start teasing the next videos that's going to be coming up so all right ladies and gentlemen see ya